At first, you're gonna have customers that don't know they need lashes. Second type of customers, you're gonna have customers that have had lashes in the past, but maybe they have a problem uh, with the person, maybe they move, maybe something happened. And then you're gonna interpret your social media accounts. If any of you have, like, uh, who has, you know, someone from doing hair or doing makeup or other stuff, and this question comes a lot, do I, can I post my lash services under my uh, hair or makeup account? Google and Instagram are gonna be the two platforms that you need to launch your business. And that's it. Like we can just turn the CD off and leave. As long as you remember these two. So once you know the photo, the video, the page, the website that they promote, Listening to the Full Time Lash Artist Podcast. If you want to jumpstart your lash career, you can also watch Cosme's free lash training at www.fulltimelashartist.com. Let's grow. Number one secret, in my opinion, is in order to make sales, you need, right, you need customers, but the customers don't just magically show up. You need to have people to talk to and then convert them into sales, right? So this is a saying online, like leads up, leads up the lifeblood of your last business. And so, and then if we have enough time, I'll show you a little bit on the things that we did to create an actual brand because a brand, building a business is great, but if you build a brand, you'll not compete with anyone. Competition, we all know, doesn't matter, especially in the beauty industry, but in any industry, if you don't have a brand, you just compete with everybody else. Your brand is the number one thing that will differentiate completely yourself from the other people. And then how to become omnipresent. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. This is the time when I, when I talk with uh, Cosmina students, everybody's feeling so mighty and they kind of beat themselves up by not knowing where to start. So first things first, what do you think? Is competition good or bad? Like having a lot of competition, is it good or bad? Good. I think it depends on how you look at it. It, 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 it could be emotionally support. Competition means is demand, right? So now we just have to know how do we get a piece of that. If there's no competition, it's rare in today's day and age, you're not going to reinvent it. Lashes have been around for, I don't know, 10 plus years. So it's not like you're going to reinvent the wheel and then create something new. But first is you research your competition. Where are you guys located, roughly? Around here? Yeah. Around? Yeah, so you go into your city because if we do a search now on my phone, the things that I'll see here, if I type in, like in this uh, example, I said Lash, Lash Extension Online Course, so this is the exact research that we did when uh, we launched her uh, online course. If you type in Lash Salon near me here versus when you go to Lowell or you go to Boston or you go to Medford, you got to see different things because Google really goes after proximity and ads, then I'll show you in a second. Then once you identify your top five competitors, in case you didn't know, you can go to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library and type in their name and you'll see all of their promotions. Absolutely every single ad that they're running, you'll be able to find them. You think that's important? Mm -hmm. Well, if you know your competition and you know what they sell and what they promote, what does that mean? It means, especially if you look at, let's say you look at an ad and it says, well, this one is December 8, 2023, so it's only one year, uh, it's only one month. But then you see one that it's been running for three months. What does that mean? It's profitable because people won't spend money on something that's not bringing them uh, a return, right? And then, of course, you look at their uh, testimonials, reviews, and this should be moving forward. How many of you have an active business already? So you, all of you are starting out. So for a while, you might have to offer your services for free couple friends here and there, cousins, sisters, whatever. It's fine. But ask for a five-star review on Google, right? You offer something of value. It's number one is your time. You're gonna spend some money on, and that's okay. That's, you know, the game. But ask for a five, that's at least what people can do to support you back when you offer something like that, right? Google and Instagram are gonna be the two platforms that you need to launch your business. And that's it. Like we can just, Turn the CD off and leave as long as you remember these two. So once you know the photo, the video, the page, the website that they promote, how many of you are familiar with ChatGPT? Have you used it? Perfect. So literally, I was there. Look at the search. I said, what are the top lash extension salons in terms for maps? And ChatGPT told me the top three. You don't even have to spend time doing your own research. You literally ask ChatGPT. 
I'm going to tell you a secret. The reason that we're here today is I uh, said to Goodman a couple months ago, go to ChatGPT and ask one of the uh, esthetician and beauty schools in Manas to give us a list of top 10 and then to give us the name and email of the person in charge of the programs. Oh, wow. And ChatGPT gave us those things. And then we started reaching out to um, emails to, to um, offer the classes and whatnot. Don't sleep on it. It's a free version, but then the one that I'm using, it's like 25 months or something like that. It gives you a little more, uh, like up to the free version. It's still powerful. It just gives you data up until 2022, I think. Uh, so it's chat.openai.com. But you can use it for anything that you can imagine from what would be a good um, offer, promote for my lash salon in Boston, Mass. Or give me top three offers that I could run, all kinds of things that, and anything that goes to your mind, you can ask your GPT, it's gonna answer you back. It's gonna save you a ton of time. So once you uh, use this, the website to create headlines, website copy, titles, scripts, anything that you might overthink it, ChatGPT is going to simplify it and it's going to give it to you like right on spot in like a couple seconds. So this is something that I want you to, um, to read attention. At first, you're going to have customers that don't know they need lashes. Second type of customers, you're going to have customers that have had lashes in the past, but maybe they had a problem uh, with the person, maybe they moved, maybe something happened. And then you're going to have... Um, because they know they want lashes, but they don't know who to choose. And then you're going to have the one they want to go after, which is brand aware, meaning they won't ser search on Google lash salons, they'll search for your business name, right? So that's going to be the one that um, you want to track. So some questions that people might ask when they don't know they need lashes is, how can I save time during my makeup, right? A lash extension service can be um, an asset. People that know they have a problem, how much do eyelashes cost? Different type of question, a different type of question. Then they know they need it, but now I don't know which one to choose. So I go for eyelash salon near Boston. And then people that know the salon name or the brand name, they're gonna search for that. So that's the one that eventually you want to target to, to go after. So customer advertise. This is one uh, exercise that we do all the time if, if we talk about a new service or a new offer. Picture the name of the person that you want to serve, the ideal customer that you want to serve. So, Cosmina is for the last service, not for the training, for the last service. Jennifer, she's 40 plus years old. She lives in um, Winchester. She might work in finance or real estate or business. Uh, she makes at least 60K plus per year. So, all these things are important. Why? Because you know, if you have an idea, what and then how are you going to find these out? Once people start to come into your place, doesn't matter if it's in your living room at first, or if you rent some type of office or a storage, ask them. You can have to make some conversation, right? So you're gonna find out what people are doing. And based on that, you're gonna create your own customer avatar, right? Why? Because then you know these people hang around and every single person can be a referral to your salon. How many of you heard this? It's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. Who knows you? When it comes to business, right? When it comes to your business, why? It's all about the traffic. Like how many people can find your business when they need it the most. So we got search, which is Google and YouTube. And then we got what I call interruption marketing, all the other platforms. But think about how different are these two type of, and think about yourself as a consumer. If you need, let's say your bathroom explodes tonight, Pipe burst, whatever. You go to Google and you search for plumbers near me. First one that pops up, you're going to click on it. You're going to click on his uh, phone number, call, ask them to come and uh, fix your stuff. Then, if you don't need it, like right now, when you are on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever platform you're using, what are you doing all the time? Right? Like you forget, like, we lose, like, how many hours a day are doing this? And then eventually something makes you stop. Here's what I think. You should pay attention to moving forward because once you're going to start spending money on these to attract customers, you also want to think as a business owner, even when you're a, a consumer, even when you're just going, when you stop, think about why did I stop? What was that thing that made me stop? Was it a cat? Was it a dog? Was it some kind of uh, product? It was a discount. How big of a discount it was? Why? Like, think about as a business owner, what makes you stop? So again, 
on Google. Once you search eyelashes near whatever city you are, look at the competitors. But then also below, you'll see that Google gives you something. It's, a, it's an important piece of data. What people, are, uh, what people ask Google about. How much should lash extension be? How long does eyelash extension uh, last for? Why stop eyelashes? Like all these questions are things that people, and in this case, your your uh, customers are searching for, right? And then we have YouTube. I would say you don't need to focus on YouTube first because it's the longest game ever. It's gonna take a long time to uh, master it. So it would be two platforms, it's Instagram and Google My Business. And then you have, of course, Facebook, Instagram, and then TikTok. So yeah, Google My Business. They discontinue, like if you search it on, on App Store now, you won't find it. But if you go to your laptop or desktop or whatever, you just type in Google My Business profile, like tonight or tomorrow, and make sure you create a profile. It's free. You can post the same things that you post on IG, whatever you post on Facebook, you just post on Google too. It acts the same way, but look at this. One month, 12,000 people view the business. 3,500 people search for lash extensions, eyelash extensions, lashes near me, lash certification classes. 12,000 people saw Kuzmina's uh, Google Business profile. So again, these two are gonna be the ones to go for. Um, to be with time, once you master these two, you can go to TikTok and Pinterest and, and all the other ones. Um, everybody's with uh, what sponsored ads are. Mm -hmm. You see them on Facebook, you see them on Instagram. The same thing is on Google, it's just on Google to target uh, keywords. But the big traffic is the gasoline on the fire. You still have to know what do you sell, what to uh, promote, what to offer, and all these other things. We'll dive quickly into what a brand is. Again, we talked in the morning about audit yourself and understand what you want to uh, to be and what kind of business you want. But I feel like this is the one thing that you should take a screenshot of because when we when when Cosmina started the salon, I said to her, "Look, especially when COVID hit, I said I don't want you to go through what you've been through before in terms of I don't want you to just be tied up to one specific um, service." Now, the way that we kind of see things, they can all work individually, meaning the salon can sell eyelash extensions, other people can do eyelash extensions, it doesn't have to be just her. <clears throat> she decided she wants to brand herself as a personal brand, her name, if you type in on Google, you'll find that lash training is her number one keyword, right? And, but then we can sell the salon if we want to, or we can franchise it, and the uh, trainings and certifications have nothing to do with it. The same thing with the product line. Yeah, a product line itself can exist on its own, regardless if the salon gets sold, or regardless if we decide to sell the certification part of the, the business. Questions about this? Because I feel like this is the, if you understand this and you apply it, this is gonna change the game of like how you, how you move forward with your uh, with scaling the business. Right? Brand search versus everybody else. You already know what I'm about to say. It's one thing for people to search for lash salons near me versus if they search for the name of the business, Clinic Lashes, or her uh, name. And here's an example. We were paying, when we won the advertising campaign on Google for her trainings, we pay 113 for every lead. Not for every student that pays. Let's say that conversion is 30%, meaning out of 10 people that say, I want the discount, they give us name and a phone number, that's 113, 113, 110, versus what they search for, living lashes, <coughs> it's only $30. Huge difference, right? So, we all know, in order for somebody to buy from you, they need to trust you. How do they do that? Well, of course, they have to like you. Not you necessarily, personally, but what you have to offer to the world uh, and how you uh, brand yourself. <coughs> but in order for that to happen, you need more people to know you. So, how do you fat, uh, I like to call this, um, fabricate authority? Have you ever been searching for something on Amazon and then everywhere you go, you just follow you around? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I mean. So, let's say you have one video and three posts. One video says something about how to maintain your lashes after, you know, with the lash care. Um, one thing that uh, Kuzmina did that was really successful, it was when somebody was paying a deposit to book a service, when they left, they were receiving an email with a video that was explaining how to maintain the lash and uh, meaning. 
You're not gonna sleep uh, with your eyes in the pillow. You're not gonna uh, swim. You're not gonna go to the beach. Whatever, like all these things that you know better than me. But you want those, and then um, you have three other posts, let's say. But in case you didn't know, well, remember in the morning we talked about on average a lifetime value uh, for a lash customer is roughly around thirty-two hundred dollars a year, right? So. What does that mean? Well, it means that we have to spend some money to get some customers. Because if we just gonna sit around and launch a website, it doesn't mean that somebody will find it, right? Like you have to do some active research, uh, well, not research, active uh, tasks in order for, for customers to come to you. So all of these platforms allow you to run advertisements as little as a dollar per day. I mean, let's be honest, a dollar a day over the course of 30 days, it's like $30, right? Even if you get one customer out of that, eventually it will be, uh, I mean, you are already profitable. So, any questions about this so far? How do you convert these um, these new people that find out about you? The one thing that I uh, tested, and it would constantly test with things, the most powerful uh, advertising campaign is the uh, Instagram direct message ad. Then, because once somebody uh, PMs you, one, you don't need a website, like with an Instagram account and a Google listing, you literally do not need a website to have um, your account. You can have pictures before and after on your Instagram account, on the Google account. You filter and qualify to DM. Uh, in her case, she has to call because it's a higher ticket when it comes to certification. But for a last service, you don't necessarily have to call it. You can filter them to DM. Um, this is what it looks like in, in real life. It's an Instagram direct message ad. So, it goes into either a manual or an auto, uh, auto reply. And this is something that I see a lot of people do and it's wrong. You should not list your prices on your website. Why? Because those are just price shoppers. If they're just looking at the website, you'll never be able to sell. You'll never be able to communicate the fact that, oh, I only have one more spot left. Uh, I have a 50% off for classic. When you know, in theory, you're going to come into your store and you're going to upsell them into volume because uh, this was the most successful campaign that we ran on IG and Facebook. It was 50% for, for classic. People were signing up like crazy. Coming into the salon, she had two uh, printed photos, one with how classic looks, one with how volume looks. She was presenting it to the uh, customer. And I'm like, oh, I want this one. Mm -hmm. I want the volume one. Yeah. Perfect. The offering was for classic because the price for volume is this. That's fine. I want this. Boom. That's it. Right? And you run a 50% discount until you fill up your calendar. But if you know, don't list your prices, you have a chance to do that on the phone or to the end. If you list your price, that's it. If you want a chance, especially at the beginning, you need to, like at first, if you have to bootstrap this, you need to milk every every uh, possibility and opportunity. Phone call, you'll ask them, or in the DM, if they had lashes before, because you're talking differently to somebody that's coming from another lab, so and you'll have different scenarios like, hey, I want to, I've been to your uh, better than next door. Well, guess what? We don't do refills after somebody else. And <laughs> that's a whole different conversation. But uh, you ask them if they have lashes before, if they're coming from another lash tech, if it's specific an event that they have to attend, and how soon they need the service. Why? Because based on their answers, you can easily offer the promotion and urgency and scarcity you always have only two spots left this week you uh, well, i have to attend a, a wedding next week oh perfect so when i have customers that uh, need lashes for a wedding typically i applied in three days before oh and looking at the calendar now i have a spot right two days before right next week. and you position everything that they tell you on the phone call into the pitch okay now um steps to launch or scale your lash business uh, a lot of times after certification classes. Uh, I talk about this, but I never actually put it into one slide. So you're the first group that actually sees this like, in, in one single slide. So first, you research your competition um, when you go home and decide what offer or promo you should run. Why? Because what you're gonna run in Lowell is gonna be different than uh, what comes in Medford and is gonna be different than somebody else runs in Boston. Prices are different based on where you go, know, real uh, location-based type of decision. Then you decide on a business name. A lot of people overthink of this months and months to an end. You don't have to overthink it because once you get an EIN, an uh, employee identification number, you'll be able to have what's called DBA, doing business as. And that doing business as, you can change it every day if you want to. The main business name, no. 
that one will have to stay the same. So in Cosmina's case, uh, the main business name is Limitless Beauty Boss LLC. Limit lashes from Limitless, like it's a big difference. But the DBA in between allows you to change that uh, actual name. Let's say you're not gonna get it right from the beginning. And who cares? Because you can always change and adjust based on that. Then you go to uh, Master Government, apply for an uh, LLC certificate and the liability insurance. The reason that I mentioned this, even if you do it in your own home, God forbid, somebody comes into your house, you slip, break a leg or, or something, or you drop a little bit of a glue in their eyes, or, and something happens, they land into ER. <laughs> Having an LLC, they can do nothing to you personally. They'll go after what the LLC owns. And at the beginning, the LLC will probably own at the most a business account, right? And let's be honest, maybe a couple a uh, couple tools or, or products that you're gonna have. Then you want a business account, you can choose uh, Chase, City Bank, or ideally, if you know you're not gonna move for the next five years, go to a local bank. You're gonna create a relationship with that bank and eventually when you need a business loan, that bank is gonna be more likely to approve you for a loan than these big uh, box companies. I wanna sign up for QuickBooks Online. Buy. Everything that you buy from that point on, it's an expense. Yeah. You wanna buy shoes, you, wanna, you might wanna buy all kinds of uh, your mileage, the gas, uh, something breaks to your car, everything is an expense. Now, don't quote me on that, I'm not a, a tax advisor, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a, <laughs> or a lawyer, that's a full disclaimer, but, a lot of the things that you now spend money on personally is going to become a business expense. And that's going to help you a lot at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, you create your social media accounts. If any of you have, like, because uh, has, you know, some from doing hair or doing makeup or other stuff. And this question comes a lot. Do I, can I post my lash services <laughs> under my uh, hair or makeup account? And I'm always saying no, unless you really plan for the next 10 years to do both. The reason for that is, again, we go back to search and all the other things that we talked about marketing. You don't want an account, it's gonna be so much harder if you decide at some point to break from that, to just rebrand everything into uh, Lash, Lashes. So in my opinion, you should create brand new uh, social media accounts based on the DBA that you're gonna have in here, because that, one, it's gonna tell Google, oh, this is a legit business. So it's gonna quickly uh, push you up into the searches. You're gonna post nine posts on Instagram and Google. The reason that you that I say nine all the time, and uh, we have a podcast actually on the YouTube channel, we talk about this. Why? Because when you get on somebody's account, without scrolling down, the first thing they're gonna see is the nine squares, right? So that's why you want nine posts. Um, nine posts? Oh, no, 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 nine posts. So let's say if you create the account tonight, mm -hmm. the account is going to be blank. You have no posts, right? Mm -hmm. You post nine just to be able to run your first ad. Why? Because when you run the first campaign, if I'm a potential customer and I click on the ad and I go to your account and I see that it's all blank, it's like, this is a scam, yeah. right? So you need the nine just so, because when I click on um, I click your account, I want to see, I don't want to, I don't want to have to scroll. Six, nine posts. Six, nine posts today. No, not today. Uh, you, you have, well, you can do it today. If you plan to launch the ad, oh no, let me ask you this. Do you already have a Lash account? I already have it. Okay, and you have a couple posts on it? I have Instagram. And I do go ahead here. This is my business. But I think I'm going to have to do it right here. Oh, you already have a... Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. But post, post anything that you post on Instagram, you can post on that. Right, I did too. Like picture, he's talking about. Yeah, picture. exactly. Like, yes. I did picture, yeah. Yeah, because. Does that have a meaning on Google, like picture? Yes. Uh, now, the nine posts apply to Instagram. Why? Because if I'm here, like if I'm on your account, mm -hmm. without having to scroll, the first thing that I see is the first nine. And if the account is brand new and you have no post, I don't want, like, I, the first thing that's going to come to mind is going to be this is a scam. This is not real, and I'm gonna bounce. So the night post, if you have an Instagram account that it's oh, so you already have I you already have some Instagram. This is mine. You go to your Instagram. Uh, if you don't mind, because if you already have an Instagram posts on this flash account, you don't have to post nine. It's nine. <laughs> I'm I'm confused about Google right there. They say five hundred is. If you if you if you don't have a Google Ads account or if you sign up with a new Gmail account. Mm -hmm. Google has an offer now. Some, they, they activated and they deactivated during the year, it depends, but now it's valid. I just check right now. Yeah. When you spend 500, they're going to give you another 500 to spend on ads. 
You don't have to spend five hundred. You can spend fifty if you want. Mm -hmm. But if you, the moment when, as long as the offer is still available. So let's say you start the app today. Mm -hmm. In five days, let's say you spend five hundred already. Google is gonna give you another five to spend. Five hundred, but only when you reach. And this, I, like, I have no benefits of this. I just listed because I checked today. Yeah, so. yeah, so it's at budget. So you launch the campaign. So I, I, uh, my whole thing is you launch one promo ad on Instagram. So the boost, right? Like once you post something, it allows you to boost it. Well, in this case, it doesn't apply because yeah, it's a real. It, but yeah. yeah, you can boost it. But you have to boost it based on what offer and promo your competitors are doing and you want to do better why because you are at the beginning stages and you're not going to have any kind of traction yet so you need to make your offer better than somebody else if let's say extreme lashes is a competitor next to you and they run 30 30 percent off on classic you're going to run 50 percent off right because now you know Foundation. exactly and then once people get into your store then you can upsell into volume and, and all the other services but when you launch this, um, and the reason that I mentioned both of them in here, so this is a new uh, type of campaign. Every time when Cosmina students were asking like, um, how do you launch on Google? Google is really like, uh, when you have to like learn it. I would say, go on YouTube, spend about two, three hours, understand the difference of running an actual promotion on Google because it's keywords based. It's not, Instagram makes it really easy. You boost the photo that you already posted, you put your credit card, you put the zip code that you're in, you choose the fact that you only wanted to show it to a uh, woman between 18 and 16 years old, and that's it. Google, it's really different. But now they did this, bless you. They need this, they, they launched this thing called Performance Max. Super easy to launch. You connect your Google listing, which is the one that I said before, which is for free, and it shows all the reviews that you have in there, all the posts. And you can even do it for five dollars a day, ten dollars a day at, at the beginning, and they pretty much do it. They almost kind of do it for you. So it's a little uh, AI involved in it. And then this one here. Let's say because I heard this before. Oh, I don't have a budget for ads, and I have a I have a strong opinion about that because we all know that we spend money that we shouldn't spend. We all know that we sometimes you uh, spend that ten dollars just for a coffee or whatever. Like all these little things add up. Uh, and eventually, if we want to make it happen, we will, right? But then this one, the last one, create partnerships with other businesses around you. This doesn't have to be just the, the nail salon or the hair salon next to you. Anybody that has any kind of business, like think about this. You're a restaurant. Do women go to restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. Any woman that goes this steps into a restaurant can become a customer to your uh, lash salon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do women use uh, real estate services, right? A anybody that has some type of crossover with the type of people that you serve can become uh, a referral can become a referral um partner in my first business the, the movie and storage one we pay 10 percent to realtors 10 percent like if you first a customer that spent three thousand dollars with us we give them 300 bucks nice. um with the other people we give let's say we have a customer that move with us and then now they send us uh, another client. We give them a hundred bucks. We don't give the same type, uh, you know, you have to be smart about it. And you have to think, how much would you pay if a customer of yours, it's very roughly $3,200 a year. Now at first, the math is a little different because you don't have money coming in. So everything that you spend is pretty much out of your own pocket, right? But if somebody says, well, I'm gonna send you a, a customer to get, to get their lashes, you would spend anyway, anywhere from fifty to one hundred dollars to get that person into the door. So if the person that comes to you, you will charge her a hundred bucks, uh, two hundred bucks, let's say for the first set. You can afford to spend fifty dollars to pay that person back. Why? Because if they see, oh, damn, you got fifty bucks just for paying or, or telling my friend that I got lashes uh, with her, I'm gonna tell other friends that I want another fifty bucks, right? And that just creates instead of. Oh, thanks. It's, it was great. I appreciate that. Uh, and, and, uh, or at least offer the person that referred to, uh, to you a discount if they are an active customer, right? You just have to be smart about how do you uh, look at these things. So again, I went pretty fast through uh, all the slides. None of you stopped me, so it means you kind of point. Mm -hmm. Again, any in the future, if you decide to take out uh, glasses with uh, Cosme, you get the discount. 
Q and A. Questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So that was it uh, from my end. Wish you guys all the best. If you got a passion for lashes, let me see it. It's time to level up. If you need me to, I'll teach you my six figure secret. Better believe it, cause I believe in you. You're listening to the Full Time Lash Artist Podcast. If you want to jumpstart your lash career, you can also watch Cosme's free lash training at www.fulltimelashartist.com. Let's grow.